Welcome back to Coloring Through the Bible. My name is Keegan Harkins, and today I want to talk to you about God's perfect peace. I mean, I don't know about you, but I need peace in my life every day. It's it's just a necessity. I feel like I can get swept away with worry or stress or just, you know, busyness. And I need God's perfect peace to keep me centered, to keep me calm, to, to give me joy, to, to give me what it takes to make it through my day. And the verse that's really been just rattling through my head all day today, it's one of my favorite verses. It comes from the book of Isaiah in chapter 26 and verse 3. And it says, you will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. I love that verse. I love it because it reminds me that perfect peace is obtainable. It is the result of that steadfast, that unwavering, that persistently committed trust of God. Because when we trust God completely, our eyes are off of what's going on. It's off of the things that steal our peace, that steal our joy, and it's on God. And we're reminding ourselves, he's got this. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what trial or temptation or just the busy and hecticness of life, God can handle it. There's nothing that I'm experiencing that is beyond his capabilities. And when I realize that, it just rushes over me in peace. God has my life in his hands for better or for worse. Whether some days are good and some days are hard, it doesn't really matter because I trust. That's, that's that word steadfast. Steadfast is unwavering. It's persistent. It is trust that doesn't go off track. It's trust that holds on tight no matter what, no matter what. It believes wholeheartedly with everything you have that God is capable of doing anything. He's keeping my life in his hands and whatever comes I can trust that God will bring me through it, that his plan will go through my life. And so I don't need to stress over the details because a lot of stuff in my life that is stressful is totally beyond my control. And so when I remind myself, I don't have to be in control because God already is. That's when we're just flooded with peace. I, I've seen this truth over and over and over in my life. It's one that it really, it's a lifeline when things are just starting to get out of control or just really stressful or painful. God's perfect peace is a guarantee. It doesn't matter what situation we're going through. But we can't have it if we don't trust in God. If we don't have that trust that he has everything in control, then we're going to try and take control or we're going to try and run around and help God out. I mean, I, I don't know if you've been guilty of that, but I have often found myself trying to help God out because I don't see the answer to my prayer coming. So then I'll think, well, maybe I can kind of make it happen. And, and that's not peace. Then you really start to stress and plan and manipulate and totally the opposite of peace. Peace is giving it to God. And sometimes I actually have to close my eyes and visualize myself giving God whatever it is that I'm stressing over or whatever's happening or my children, my husband, you know, just close my eyes and give it to God and realize that as much as he's got my life in his hands, he has their life in his hands too. And whatever comes, that's his will. And I can trust that he knows what he's doing. You know, and I don't know how many times I've had people ask me, how can you be so calm right now? How can you be smiling? How can you be so happy all the time? I mean, I know your life story. I know that it hasn't been always easy, and yet you're such a happy person. And it's because of Isaiah 26.3. Because when life is falling apart, we need to remember who's in control, and it is not me. As much as my ego would love to convince myself that I'm in control of my situations, I'm not, and, and I don't have to be. 
I shouldn't try to be. I should be just giving it over to God. And when we do, when we trust him that much, that's when our life is filled with peace. There's actually a story in the Bible that if you grew up in Sunday school, you've heard the story before. It's just one of my, it's, it's one of my favorites. It's kind of like this great snarky kind of moment that it just really makes me chuckle. It's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So most all of you have heard that story. So these men were in the middle of a really bad, stressful situation. They, they had every reason to be freaking out. They had every reason to have a lack of peace, but they didn't. They lived their life in peace. I mean, these men were Jewish boys when they were taken off into captivity. And so they, they, they spent their early adulthood and their whole lives in a land that wasn't their own, in Babylon. And there was a law that said that everyone had to worship these gods of the Babylonians. And the, the king set up this big statue and said, everybody's got to worship this statue. And if you don't, you're going to be thrown in this fiery furnace. But they had persistently committed trust and faith in God. And they did not fall to temptation. They did not give in to peer pressure. They stayed true to the God that they served. And my favorite line is the king is like totally amazed that they are not worshiping these false gods because to him, it didn't make sense. They had lots of multiple gods. What was one more? That he couldn't wrap his brain around these men trusting one God completely and to being that committed to it. You know, that he didn't understand that there is only one God. He didn't understand that this one God that these men were worshiping was all powerful. He was it. Everybody else was an imagination. But I love, I love their response when the king is like, you know, I'm going to throw you in this furnace and you will die. You will be baked alive. Is this really worth it? In Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king. I love this. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we're thrown in the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your hand, O oh king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O oh king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you've set up. Oh, I love that. You can just kind of see that, you know, drop the mic, booyah. I love that response. You know what? The God we serve is able to save us. That is where we get our peace from. We can have peace because the God we serve is able to save us from what? Whatever life throws at us, whatever we are going through. And then that second part, but even if he does not, we're still going to serve the Lord. See, sometimes God's will is that he walks in the fire with us. We know from the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that Jesus walked in the fire with these men and they walked out of that furnace completely unharmed. He saved them. God's going to walk with us through everything that we're going through. No matter what fire we find ourselves in, we are not alone. He is with us. He's there to comfort us, to guide us, to handle life for us. He is able to save us. But even if he does not, he is still in control and he is still worthy of our praise. He is still worthy of our persistent commitment and ultimate trust because he's still in control even if things don't work out the way we think they should. That's peace. Trust. So if you're struggling with a lack of peace today, I really just want to encourage you to picture yourself giving over whatever you're stressing about to God. And then relax in the peace of his trust. Because whether he saves you from it or he makes you go through it. Whether you walk out and you're completely unsinged or you're a little bit burned for the journey. If God's in control, then there's a reason. There's a purpose. 
and you'll be okay because what can this world do to you? God's in control. And even if our life on this earth is cut short, we have eternity in heaven with him. So whatever you're going through, trust the Lord and let that trust fill your heart with peace. Because peace comes not when we have it all together, but by trusting the one who does. I hope you've been encouraged today. Thanks for spending some time with me. Have a truly blessed day.